we went through all this stuff and we have to now make a decision. Hi you guys, welcome back to my channel. I need to go ahead and update you guys on what happened today with the fertility specialist. I'm out of breath because I just <laughs> ran up and down the stairs twice. I kept forgetting to grab the camera. So we met with my fertility specialist today at 1.45, my husband and I that is. And you know, as soon as we sat down, he was just kind of like, okay, you know, tell me what's going on. And so we talked about, you know, the fact that we're, um, you know, just kind of bummed out that we're not pregnant yet. You know, we thought that maybe IUIs would just be the thing that did it for us. And you know, that we were grateful that my husband's sperm count has increased because of suggestions that they made, you know, we're still not pregnant. And it sucks. Everyone's pregnant <laughs> in my life, but me. I swear you guys, a lot of my friends are pregnant. Um, <laughs> and my hairdresser is pregnant. I have a coworker who's pregnant. And in my building that I work in and the other suites, girls are pregnant. And I'm just sitting over here like, waiting for my turn. <laughs> so we kind of went through and told him that we felt like maybe we should move forward with, you know, a more invasive IUI, kind of leaning towards injectables, obviously. He said by no need do we have to do that. But he, when we talked about it, he said that actually, you know, the success rates are a little bit better with IUIs that are injectable. However, you are at a higher risk for multiples. So this is when he told us that Injectable IUIs are when he would tell me that we have to monitor. Obviously, you don't want to be in a situation where you're not monitoring an injectable IUI and then you end up having a, having a pregnancy of like seven babies because that's not safe for mom, not safe for the babies. So in regards to kind of the elephant in the room right now, I told you guys I would bring up the fact that we're not being monitored right now. And basically, we are not monitored because... I don't have any kind of issue. Those who have PCOS or endometriosis, they're the ones that actually are monitored with their regular medicated Clomid or Famara cycles. And because I don't really have any issues, according to him, they don't actually monitor me because I'm not really at a risk, whatever that means. I know every office is gonna be a little bit different. So don't take that for anything more than it's worth unless you actually use my fertility clinic. Um, everywhere is going to be different, but we went through all this stuff and we have to now make a decision if, for one, if we want to stay with our clinic. And that's kind of something that my husband and I have already talked about. And number two, if we're going to move forward with injectable cycles or do another one to two IUIs, he said that would be a recommendation. He would either recommend, you know, going forward with one or two more IUIs or doing injectables. He was on board for either. So... My husband and I have talked about this and I don't want to upset anyone because I know that emotions are pretty high on my channel whenever I talk about how they don't monitor us and especially what we just went like especially what we just went through doing two IUIs having to pay out of pocket again because they really didn't listen to me. I get it and honestly I would love to move fertility clinics however and this is just kind of this is kind of where it just gets a little bit sucky. However, we are not going to be moving fertility clinics and going to Iowa City. And I'll tell you guys why. Um, I would absolutely love to. And honestly, if I didn't have the job that I have now, I probably would do it with no problem. But we are going to move forward with injectable cycles. So let's get that out there. If we are not successful with this IUI we just did, we are going to move on to injectable cycles 100%. We're doing it. So the reason why we will not move fertility clinics is because the amount of monitoring you need is, a, I mean, it's a lot. It's definitely unavoidable. You have to monitor, which I'm thankful for, but it requires you to come in on day two or three of your cycle for a baseline ultrasound and blood work. Then you're going in every two days after you stop the medication or maybe even while you're on the medication. So you have to continue to be monitored until the point you reach a trigger shot and then you have to go back 36 hours later for an IUI and that's a lot of going to the doctor. And if we were to move fertility clinics, it's an hour and a half drive there, hour and a half drive back. So you're talking three hours just for drive time plus probably 30 to 45 minutes of being inside the actual clinic. So I would be taking a half day of work, 
multiple times in a week or in 10 days. I would be gone a lot from work and in my job, just personally, I'm the only one that can actually do my job where I work at and I am responsible for three clinics. So when I'm not around, number one, work piles up and number two, it's not fair to some of the patients that I have that I deal with. Sometimes they come in because I've set up a time for them to come in and see me or it's spur of the moment things, but I need to be available for them and I really don't think I could be okay with just saying, hey, you know, I'm going to take these two weeks and be off a half day every other day or every third day. So that's kind of the main reason is the travel time. Honestly, if the clinic was like half an hour away, we probably would move and then just start with them doing injectable cycles. But I do feel better about staying after talking to the doctor just because I do feel like they don't mean harm by not monitoring me, but I am a little upset about how they kind of refused to do an ultrasound that day and how we wasted $500 for an IUI or $475. So yeah, I'm kind of really bitter about that still. I'm a little bit salty <laughs> about it, but honestly, I'm just going to let it go because now we're at the point where, you know, we want to get pregnant. Injectable IUIs are already going to take enough out of me. I'm still going to have to miss probably two hours of work every few days which I can make do with a lot better and I won't feel as bad about it but now we're going to be monitored now it's gonna, not going to be a big deal I don't think so I'm honestly okay with our decision to stay with this clinic now moving on to something more positive and happy after I left the fertility clinic he told me or before I left the fertility clinic he told me and my husband that if we wanted to move forward with injectables we needed to call the day or two before my cycle starts. Um, obviously, I was a little worried because I wouldn't know if I was pregnant yet, most likely, unless I tested early and even testing a day or two early. You may be pregnant and still get a negative. So I was worried about that because the medications, obviously, you have to have them sent to you because you start them on day two or three of your cycle, depending on whenever they tell you to do it. And I didn't want to pay for those medications and have them sent to our house and then find out I was pregnant. So I was kind of having anxiety about it, but he said not to worry if I can just call the day before my cycle starts, which helps because generally the day before, like the night before, I can normally tell because the whole day I'll have back pain and then my cycle will start the next day like full force, boom, Red Sea is flooding open, <laughs> TMI. But yeah, so I kind of feel better about it, but I still didn't want to have the chance of, you know, paying for this medication and then ends up being pregnant. So what he did for us was he told us to write down the name of the medications, which he wrote them down for us. And he said that I could call my insurance company and see if they were covered, because at least if they're covered and we have them sent to us, if for some reason we are actually pregnant and we don't need them, at least we're not out, you know, hundreds and hundreds, maybe even over a thousand dollars. So the most fantastic news I could have gotten today is that all of the medications are covered. Like, I know that's, that we're lucky because a lot of insurance companies do not cover even a portion of fertility medications. And we have been super, super blessed that our insurance company has covered all the rounds of Clomid, the one round of Hemera. They've covered all of our fertility ultrasound, well, the one ultrasound that we got for fertility. And they've covered the office visit. So they're covering everything. And even when it comes to having to do ultrasounds every two or three days to be monitored for follicle growth, they cover all of those. So we do have a deductible we'll have to meet, but obviously it's going to be nowhere near paying, you know, $300 for each ultrasound and, you know, $200 for each visit and $1,000 for medications. All we have to pay for is the actual IUI itself. And <laughs> honestly, guys, I am so happy. The three medications he told me to look up, if you guys were wondering, is a Folistem Gonal F, Gonal F, I'm probably not saying that right, and then Ovidril, which is the trigger shot. And I honestly thought for sure the trigger shot wasn't going to be covered because everyone that I talked to, a lot of them said that it was not covered with their insurance, but that it was a really good price. So I was like, wow, the holy crap, I cannot believe it's covered. I feel a lot better about it now. And I also didn't want the stress of knowing because when we went into injectables, my husband and I were like, okay, well, how much is it going to cost? 
is it going to make sense to try two or three rounds of that or would it just make sense to go right for IVF and not put in thousands of dollars into injectables and so this is kind of a load off it's really a blessing and I'm just happy like honestly I'm just happy to move on if we're not pregnant this cycle yes I will be very bummed because now we're talking about a more invasive kind of way to get pregnant and you're injecting yourself with shots for a week and then having to constantly go in there and <laughs> it's going to be a lot of work obviously it's going to be all worth it in the end when we have our precious baby or babies <laughs> who even knows but yeah i just wanted to update you guys on that just because you know there's a lot of tension going <laughs> on right now and obviously in my last video i was very upset and i feel like in the beginning i just kind of sounded like witchy with a b but it's only because emotions are so high and honestly infertility it, it can it makes your emotions go high you know my husband and i get stressed out and then we yell at each other because i'm stressed out that i'm not pregnant and he's stressed out because he can't help me and having to do this iui again thank gosh he was in good spirits about it because i was a little nervous to tell him like hey we are gonna have to go back and do an iui again so best case scenario we would get pregnant this cycle but also something else to look forward to, which is kind of exciting. I will obviously be doing a live pregnancy test this time at 12 or 13 DPO. I am going to go off of this past weekend, my real ovulation, at least what I'm considering my real one, based off the fact that I actually did have pain. And the next day today, the side of my breasts hurt, which means I ovulated like like every other cycle that I've done. So this was my true ovulation and I was right. I just wanna, I'm glad that I know my body and I'm glad that I advocated for myself because you have to advocate for yourself always. No one's gonna do it for you. If you know when something in your heart is right, fight for that because they don't always know best. In my case, they don't always know anything <laughs> because you know, I'm just a late ovulator and that's not a problem. You know, it happens to a lot of people. So them acting like it's not normal is actually not the case. So I will be doing a live pregnancy test. The only thing that would keep me from doing so would be if my cycle were to start early. But since I had to take a test the day before my cycle, I'm probably going to test. I'm going to go buy pregnancy tests, the cheap ones at Walmart. And I'm going to take one probably starting at 11 DPO. And then if I don't have a positive the morning of 13 DPO, I will call my fertility clinic and we will get rolling with the injectable medication. So something to look forward to because I have not done one of those in a long time. I think I've only ever done two on my channel and they were from back when I first started Clomid many, many, almost a year ago now, right? I'm pretty sure it's been like quite a while. So something to look forward to for you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you found this update very interesting. <laughs> um, if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. Honestly, I just want to say thank you to those of you who have messaged me on Snapchat and Instagram. Some of you guys, honestly, you guys are so stinking sweet and just your words of encouragement, they mean so much to me. I have screenshots in my phones of a lot of Instagram DMs because they're so sweet. And if I'm ever feeling down, I go and I read those. So never be afraid to come talk to me and if you don't want to comment publicly i'm always welcome for dms i always respond to you guys so i will see you guys in my next video and as always baby dust to all of you that are trying to conceive bye